Yeah, there we go, we're live. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm joined today by a guy whose story I cannot wait for you to uh, to hear about, uh, Chris Tibbetts, Tibbsy. Um, I know Tibbsy, we share a coach, we share two coaches, actually. We share two coaches and we're both coaches ourselves. Um, how you doing? I'm very good, mate. Very good. And yourself? Yeah, not too bad. Thank you. Not too bad at all. Um, so yeah, um, Chris is the 100kg coach um, because he's lost 100kg. And I wanted to share with you today Chris's story, what he what, what he's done, how he's done it. Um, and then I've got a few questions from, from people as well. If you've got any questions during this, guys, whilst you're watching, anything you want to know, drop them in the comments. We can see those comments coming live so we can ask, ask those. But um, yeah, Chris, take us back to the beginning. Take us back to the beginning and let's let's hear about this so, journey. Yeah, the beginning. So all my um as a young child I was active. We go to the very beginning. Um when I was about nine years old, my brother had a road traffic accident. Uh we actually lived in Ellesmere at the time. Um and it they we used to, he used to go to, they used to go to school at Adams, I think he's in Whitchurch and if anyone knows the road between Ellesmere and Whitchurch, because you're a lot of your people from Shrewsbury Shrop, might know, uh, basically he had a minibus accident and broke his neck. Um, and when that happened, basically I lost my parents for a couple of years because their sole focus was on them. Um, and I'm telling you this story because it's quite relevant that through the work I did, which we'll come to later, that was probably the starting point of my emotional eating. So I could trace it back to being nine ten years old hmm. throughout uh my teenage years you know self-sufficient line because obviously you know my parents had a focus on my brother um and i played sport but i also found comfort in food and when i did a lot of the research and looking back at myself i can remember instance of my dad catching me in the cupboards mashing a packet of biscuits going and buying food from the takeaway because i could speak to somebody and then go home and i still have a meal all of these things, you know, I saw food as my crutch, as my sort of friend, because that's what I had. But when you're growing up as a big lad, I was six foot at 11. So I've always been big. Um, it didn't matter because I was active and big and, you know, um, genetics were taking care of it. Uh, about 17, I uh, damaged my uh, knee ligaments quite seriously playing rugby. And at that point, then that um, meant that I no longer had sport to fight the weight. And at 17, you then are drinking and doing other things that are adding your calories into your life. So mm -hmm. that was, you know, the, the beginning, and that was my life. So I, you know, it wasn't something that crept up on me. I'd always use food um, throughout. I got married quite young, um, and it was, you know, a uh, our children young it was a challenging relationship i was in um and food was used as a um tool as a weapon as either a comforter or a feeder or whatever um chris actually on that point when you when you think back to those younger years before yeah. you before your marriage yeah was there any part of you at that point that recognized a problem or did it just seem normal i just agree so and so <laughs> yeah 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 um okay yeah so you didn't think oh, i'm eating too much here or like this is no god no 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 yeah. and and you know whenever i went out with the lads playing rugby you know i could always sink more beer i could always eat more you know food than them and it didn't really matter you know it, it just i mm -hmm. was really lucky um because my metabolism then was quite quick and then obviously yeah. as i grew as i had the injury you know um it just changed um yeah so, so I'd always known for having. I was always known for having a healthy appetite. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, uh, always yeah. known. And, and and the problem with that, is, kids, aren't we? Like we're encouraged to yeah. eat everything that's left on our plate. Like yeah. if you don't eat much as a kid, it's kind of seen. Oh, there's something wrong with him. Oh, he's picky. Or, he's picky. Yeah, yeah. Or, he's fussy. Eat what you've got. Yeah. You won't have any pudding, or you know, all of that kind of yeah. stuff. And yeah. now, uh, <laughs> I wish. And, yeah, and yeah. I think it's interesting as well because that then create so all of those behaviors. So obviously when I was young, it was like, um, oh, you know, oh, here's have this, or you need this, or you want that. You know, and it, there was never any sort of barrier. There was never any filter to it. It was like, you know, 
what you know food was seen as a, a way of you know and then the taller you get the bigger you are, oh big strong boy and i think it was interesting because when i was born and my mum told me this and she made a big joke about it when i was born i was a premature baby and the doctor turned around to my mum and said well if he makes it through the first two weeks that's a great success but when he does grow up he'll probably be a weakling he'll always have weak lung capacity you know oh. he may not see you know he'll always yeah. struggle mm. and that's then i think um when i got selected for the, the welsh trials my mum said yeah i think i need to go and find that consultant and give him your food bill and your clothing bill <laughs> yeah man because you're not a weakling you know you know, just, you, know you, you cost me a fortune and uh, lung quite capacity, funny. you're like you're doing well and we'll come on to this later but doing triathlons you need yeah. some lung capacity to do to do uh yeah to do that kind so, of thing so that's quite interesting from that perspective and, and that so i you know i, I find that film and we just said she wants you to say that so um <laughs> yeah. then obviously got married young um yeah and i was always good so i'd probably say i am world class at losing weight i uh, i am world class at it but i yeah. problem was i was world class at putting weight on yeah um yeah. so every so often i'd go oh i don't like and i would shed weight really easily you know um but then over a period of time my wife at the time my first wife would go she'd get worried jealous whatever and wait you know all of a sudden all the habits happen weight starts getting put back on and all that sort of thing so um then when i hit my 30s uh i got quite successful i had a successful business and i just gradually got put weight on but i'd always been quite big so everyone's oh it's a big fella it's okay he's a big fella mm. um and i never felt any health issues yeah i was getting bigger but i could always buy clothes so it never affects you mm -hmm. you're never really concerned by it and then i got to um i've been on a trip business trip to Dubai and I was a bit uh and as I was away I was noticing I was breathing heavier and I was feeling really unfit and you know all of those things and then when I stayed I stayed with my business partner at the time and we shared a room and he said listen mate you you need to go and see somebody I said why is this you made a racket in your sleep and at one point I woke up and went to check you still alive if you were breathing God, God. So I'm thinking, oh, yeah, okay. I'm going to share a picture. Well, I should talk this. I'm, yeah. I'm going to try. I've not done this before, but try and share a picture of you at yeah. this time. Yeah. So people have got like a, I just carry on. Sorry, anyway. Yeah. Just to... um, so, yeah. So that happened. Um, and I went back. Hey, that's me. Yeah, we're back to fly out. That was when we were flying out to Dubai. Yeah. There you go. So that, that was Chris, what, nine, when was this? Nine years ago? Uh, yeah. It'll be, it'll be 10 years in June. So, yeah, nine years ago. Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. That's just yeah. to give people a bit of an idea of, of yeah. I've kind of stopped that share now of where of where you you were nine years ago. Yeah, Ten absolutely. And I think with that, um, so I was there and, and the problem is as I'd grown quite big, I built this resilience around myself and this thickness around myself that it didn't matter. And I, at that point I was incredibly unhappy. Mm -hmm. um i thought i had i had the responsibility of our business i had the responsibility of a business partner i had the responsibility of my disabled brother i had the responsibility of my mother who was in early stage of dementia i had mm -hmm. my three children i had my wife so basically i was it everything was dependent upon me and mm -hmm. and i saw food as my comfort food as my solace and that was it you know i still survived i was still the big bloke yeah you know i never had photographs of myself ever Mm -hmm. because that was really rare to get a photo of me yeah and yeah. i came back and i thought okay i'm not feeling 100 i thought maybe it was the heat in dubai we went not played golf even though you know um it was like 40 degrees but we had golf buggies and yeah, yeah. And i thought perhaps it's the heat probably that. but go and get yourself checked out um i went to go and see the gp and i've said this story quite a lot but um i think what i want to get over which i probably haven't done and this is really relevant Stuart, is that the reason I gloss over this story of the doctor is I am still ashamed of it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I gloss over it about how I truly felt because actually I don't like talking about it and I'm really ashamed of myself. So yeah, you're probably the first time you're going to get the true story. 
because okay. I'm probably more relaxed to tell people truly what I felt. Yeah, and this is probably about the eighth time I've told it. Now. So I'm feeling, I'm feeling more, and I've, and I've sort of, I did it on a video about it, and what it, I went to the doctor, went to see a GP, booked an appointment, and it was interesting. So I went to see him, and I walked into the surgery, and it was a doctor Bob, one of the guys who used to be the club doctor of club in you. I said, I don't know. I says, uh, and he looks at me, and he goes, "All right, big fella." <laughs> uh, I was like, "Hi, hey, Doctor Bob." He says, "It going tipsy." I says, "Oh, okay." So I just come out from Dubai, and I got this problem sleeping, and and the thing, you know, I just don't feel a hundred percent. And he said, "You know," he basically went, yeah, "It could be due to, due to the fact that the size of you." I was like, "Yeah, I I appreciate that, Doc." He says, "Well, let's get to the worst point." He says, "Jump on the scales." So I jump on the scales and basically break them. These are salter twenty up to twenty six stone scales. Okay, yeah, and yeah. it just goes around and goes, and then the arrow doesn't come back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man, that, uh, yeah, went, went, yeah, right. We got a real problem here. Um, he says, right, say time. He says, you need to go to the hospital to get weighed because they have a sit on one you can sit on and it weighs you. Um, and while you're there, the nurse can do the blood test, it'll make life a lot easier. He says, but if you can come back in a week, that'd be really good. But I can warn you now, he says, it's not going to be good news. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, no problem. So um, I booked an appointment for the following week, had walked in, and the reception was really friendly. I was like, I had a sense of trepidation when I went there, but I was like going, no, it'll be okay, God. You know, I'm fine. I've had a little sleeping, but I'm active. I play golf. I was playing golf every day. Mm. So, you know, I was, re I was active in that. And, yeah, I... I'd got to that stage in life where clothes I was ordering from Giacomo at the top of their sizes, but okay. I'd still wear clothes, right? Yeah. yeah. So I went into the doctor surgery and uh, doctor, he says, come on, sit down. He says, okay, no problem. Um, I walked in and they had a seat there for me, a um, special one. You know, remember Jeremy Kyle? Yeah, so yeah. And I had the big ones for the bigger people. Yeah. So I had yeah. a special seat. So I thought, oh, this doesn't look good. No, <laughs> um, and I walked in and he said, "Right, we've got so many test results back, but um, they're not all back yet." He said, "But yeah, you know, we're going to have to have a really serious conversation because, based on the current set of results, he says you come up to your fortieth birthday if you don't make some drastic changes, you're going to be dead by the time you're fifty. Oh. And I'm like, going, Fuck. yeah, and and I was a bit numb. I was a bit okay." Yeah. Fine, but I, I was like, going, doesn't matter. I've got 10 years. Mm. All right, it'll be fine. I've got 10 years. Um, and I was in a state of shock. He said, but if you can come back tomorrow, make the appointment, we'll be great. Okay. And, and so that and so wrote down. What was funny is I didn't have to even make the appointment. The reception says, Mr. Tibbetts, yeah, um, two o'clock tomorrow. I was like, but I, she says, no, doctor's already sorted it. So I'm thinking, he's already done the appointment. Yeah. yeah. Not, I had to make my own. Yeah, wow. So, and I come in the next day, and basically, um, I came in, and I didn't even have to wait. She says, uh, "Yeah, doctor, see you in consultation room six, which is on the ground floor." Right. Okay. And he's yep. waiting for you. Jeez. So, with a warning, with there lots of alarm bells going on, then at, this, at that at point, I'm going right. Receptionist, they they never take you straight in. You never go to the downstairs room, right? And yeah. You know, the look on her face was going dead man walking. Yeah. Man. Right? And I've never yeah. explained this part of the story before because I have always sort of glossed over it. But mm. I walked into the room and he went, okay, Tibsy, he says, can you sit down? And I went, and I just, just feel this sense of dread. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he goes, you know, I said, you know, you need to make some changes to C50. He says, um, if you don't make drastic changes now, you're going to be dead in six months. Whoa. Wow. And I'm right. Okay. Um, and I'm like, and the previous times I've told you, I've gone, yeah, and I, sorry, yeah, I was upset. I, was shot. I felt as though somebody had basically just punched me in the chest. Mm. Yeah. And I went numb. Completely numb going, right, okay. 
And all I could think about was, all right, okay, how am I going to do this? How am I going to sort this out? How am I going to do these things? How am I going to do these things? Who Who's going to take care of that? Who, you know, Is in like, um, so you're almost writing yourself off. Yeah, like, I was like, like right, yeah. well, I need to do these things. I need to make this happen, okay? And for me, I'm then also thinking, right, how am I going to, I was in a really bad place with my wife at the time, my first wife. I thought, right, okay, I'm going to have to go home and tell her something. I'm going to have to go and do this. And I got home and I basically sat down and I went, she goes, oh, how is the doctor? Um, I went, we need to have a talk. She went, oh, what do you do? To tell you you got diabetes or something. Tell you, you know, tell you to lose some weight, did he? Yeah. And I went, no, he's told me that if I don't make changes, I'll be dead in six months. And she, and she went, yeah, well... It's your fault. You're a fat C word. Yeah. Um, yeah. She, had, she had an affectionate way of introducing me. And this, this is a, how lovely she is. And I'm, I have to be careful not talking about her. Um, yeah. She gets yeah. Upset. Um, yeah, that, that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you remember the previous yeah. mate? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, but, yeah. But basically, she used to introduce me to people at this stage in our relationship as this is my useless fat C of a husband. Wow. Uh, Do you know what's kind of interesting um, when you say that? And I've. Yeah. I've obviously heard this story a few times, not not yeah. this bit of the story, yeah. but the story of, of your journey. You know, it, it fascinates me and it inspires me. Yeah. But, but regardless of what kind of caused you to get to that stage, yeah. whether it was emotionally, whatever the reasons were, yeah. to have somebody like that, the closest person in your life, supposedly, your partner, yeah. Your wife, yeah. saying that, that must have been soul destroying. Uh, it I was, and, yeah, it was, and it's all about control. It was all about yeah. control. Yeah. And I can see it now looking back. Um, yeah. But, and at that point I went, right, well, I'm not going to get any support from there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what uh, I did was Tibsy's typical trick. Um, I went, I do what I normally do. So I had a go-to method for dropping weight quickly. Uh, it was a big bowl of cornflakes in the morning. It was tuna fish and mashed potato at lunchtime, and it was a bowl of cornflakes in the evening. Tried and tested, yeah. worked every day, worked every yeah. time. Yeah. Probably because yeah. I was in a huge calorific deficit. Because yeah, at my yeah. size, trust me, at thirty-three stone, mate, I even a normal day I'd be burning four thousand calories shifting that weight around. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. And um, it's interesting for you to say that about that diet. We, we often hear loads of stuff about quick fix diet, how to lose weight fast. You know, ten days and you'll you'll lose weight. And actually, what's what's really interesting, and we'll get on to this when we talk about where you are now, and, and I'll show some pictures of, of you, you training and things. But actually, eating in a calorie deficit, don't get me wrong, but a proper sustainable diet. The difference that you know, the difference that that allows you, yeah, to to, to sustain is the word I'm looking yeah. for to sustain that going forward. But so when you're at that point there. When you were at that point, I've just realised I'm not plugged in and we're going to lose battery at this rate. Um, <laughs> that would be good. You'd just be yeah talking on your on your own. Um, yeah. yeah when, when you're at that point, um, how long did it take you? So, so you're at the point thinking I'm going to die in six months. Yeah. Was there then a moment, or how long did it take you to then go? No, I, I can I can come back from this. Um. I, so I had a follow-up appointment with a doctor where he goes, right, we need to get on this medication, we need to get to do this, we need to get to do that. And I went, no. I said, I'm going to lose weight. He said, no, but we need to put you on this medication. I went, no, I'm not doing the medication. I will sort this out. Because mm -hmm. the one thing I am incredibly good at, again, as well, is when I'm determined and put my mind to something, I will do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because at this point... I hadn't realized I was an emotional eater. I hadn't realized I was a binge eater. I hadn't realized I over -ate. Well, I knew I over -ate, but, you know, I didn't realize I had a compulsion and a, and a, and a yeah. problem. And um, you were in a very toxic place. Related very toxic to place. So food was used, yeah. yeah. So yeah. straight into it, you know, mindset was like, forget everybody else. This was my plan. That's what I did. And I was quite successful. You know, I, I was, you know being that size and doing a massive drop like that, you will lose weight quickly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You will. You know, if you are if you're eating half of the calories you're supposed to eat in a day because of your size, mm -hmm. at least less than half, you are going to drop weight. You know, I was probably that's why I was losing six, seven pounds a week. 
which yeah. is yeah. unhealthy, but yeah. was, you know, so, so I did what that. Did. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> I guess it was what you needed though was to drop yeah. weight quickly. Yeah, and I, yeah. and I did. And I, and, and basically I think in about, so by, you know, this was September time. No, uh, yeah, we're doing, sorry, August time, I think it was. By the time Christmas came, I had shared seven stone. Whoa. Wow. In four months. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. Wow. Right. And um, so, where, so this would have been about eight, nine years ago now, yeah? Uh, yeah. Just, it, yeah. It was 2011. Yeah. So you yeah. got down to what? Because you said, with, you, what, was that your heaviest? The, the, 30, when you went over 33 was my heaviest. I think I then got myself weighed again. And it could have been my heaviest. I never knew what the scale said. Yeah. I just know, you know, um, she went, I went, how bad is it? She says, uh, well, it's probably one of the heaviest we've seen. Yeah. Uh, probably, yeah. And she said it was over 33. So I said, okay, it could have been more. I don't know, but it's over 33. Um, yeah. <coughs> so, yeah, it actually six stone because I weighed myself on the 1st of January 2012 and I was 27 stone. Gosh. So it's six stone. So, yeah. 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 Um, Kyle's just asked, well, before we move on, Kyle, yeah. I've dropped the thing on there. What was your what what were your go to when when you were at your biggest when you weren't watching what you're eating yeah. etc what were your what were your favourite meals like what did you like to eat what were you um, we used to go so my favourite we used to there was a kebab place in uh, real where we lived and there were it, they used to do doner kebabs with chicken in naan breads really big thick naan breads because it was actually it was it was a kebab place but it was actually an Indian restaurant Indian takeaway yeah yeah, yeah. Um, used to have that loads of doner meat. And loads of garlic mayonnaise. Man, yeah. So Which probably I would think I think probably one of those is about two thousand calories at least, yeah. if not more. Of course, with extra chips as well. Yeah, yeah. Went, oh, I meant while losing weight. All oh, right, okay. That's right. Well, we've, at least we found out what the <laughs> we found out yeah. what your favorite meal was back then. Yeah, we'll talk. Uh, about he that. wants to go to meals when I was losing weight. We'll, yeah. we'll go, we're going to come to that, Kyle. Don't worry, we're going to come to that. It was cornflakes, tuna, mashed potato during the. Uh, unhealthy weight loss phase yeah um, and uh yeah okay cool anyway so yeah we, you, you've that january you've weighed yourself yeah, 20 it's got to january so um and at this point as well i had made the decision that i was not going to be with my first wife mm -hmm. uh by the end of 2012 mm -hmm. um i had got a job in london uh, a contracting job in london i'd started working and uh in london and i had a an escape and by being in london all week yeah i realized how better i felt i had control of my nutrition my nutrition got a bit better mm -hmm. because you know i thought right, i need to do something this isn't serving me i got lost weight so i felt confident to go to a gym so yep. the apartment i had in london had a gym underneath which i used to go to thought right okay i'll get a personal trainer and all that started start to kick off and how did you feel going to the gym being a pretty big guy like uh, this is something that quite a lot of members of hit zone and, and things will, will probably a lot of other people relate to that fear of going to the gym when if you want to use the word you're fat yeah what 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 were you what were, i know you get to see you got a personal trainer but yeah oh, it's horrific because it was one yeah. of those gyms full of pretty people mm. yeah all right it was Actually cool. like uh, everything look yeah oh, and, the, and the guys in there are all ripped and muscly and and they're there for like three hours and and they're almost they were the reason I had a personal trainer was more for protection because I could guarantee to get the stuff I needed because the personal trainer would tell them where to go. Yeah, yeah. yeah when I went yeah. in on my own, even though I was a big guy, the 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 bodybuilders or the weight guys wouldn't talk, would just hog the equipment. Yeah, and yeah, they'd yeah. almost belittle you and make you feel small. Mm. Even though mm. I was bigger than most of them, but they would sort of like yeah. take you know. Um, so one reason I got a personal trainer was actually for protect for my personal feeling better and knowing that I could put myself in a bubble with this person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd get everything I needed because actually nobody's going to, you know, push them around. You know, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. No one's going to muck around with it. Yeah, muck around yeah. with the trainer. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and I mean, so was, uh, sorry, Chris. Was that the first? Yeah, you said you played rugby as a kid, yeah. sport as a yeah. kid. Was that the first real kind of exercise, if you want to call it, for exercise's sake, where it wasn't an organised 
like sport yeah. or team game? Was this the first time you kind of went to get fit or to lose weight? Yeah, just since I was in my so when I lost weight the first time in my twenties, I went back to playing rugby for a couple of years, about a year. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But that was the first time since my early twenties that I'd actually done any type of exercise apart from playing golf. Mm, mm. That was it. Yeah. And I don't really class golf as exercise. That's a walk where you're swinging a club. It's a nice yeah. walk. <laughs> I'm half the time I had a buggy anyway because I was a lazy sod. So. And I'm not very good at it, so I don't even count it as a sport. If I'm not good at a sport, it doesn't count as a sport. Yeah. That's- so it was a nice walk. Yeah. With lots of stress. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, in terms of that, though, I think, um, yeah, it's the first time. I, and I got some sense. I got some training. got some routine. got some, you know. And, again, I was in a kind of deficit, but I was exercising now. So, that was even better. Um, mm. and, I, and I started to lose weight gradually, but consistently. Because mm. the one thing I've noticed a lot of people on weight loss, if you lose weight too quickly – you don't have saggy skin. I'm one of the things I'm quite blessed, even though I was 33 stone, I don't have much saggy yeah. skin. I've got horrendous stretch marks. Yeah. But my yeah. skin has shrunk down, you know. So yeah. So mm. I'm quite and the only thing I've really got left is I will never, ever, ever probably have a six pack because of a little bit of skin. But it's not even enough to even want not that I want surgery, but it's like my no, back it's, star. It's my yeah, thing to yeah. say, I ain't ever yeah. going back. And it's you know. Mm. So for me, it's part of my my identity, I suppose. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, so that was great. I also then met my current wife, Carmen. Um, I had this shift of somebody who loved me, believed in me, supported me, and she'd been on the journey for me. So she 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 never knew me at my heaviest, but she's been with me since I was like twenty six stone, twenty seven stone. So she was, you know, always there from that point of view. And and did you get a level would, of account? from her as well was there that accountability and, and someone kind of holding you to uh, I, had somebody to do it for, I had somebody to do it for not yes. just myself yes yeah yeah um yeah. She, the thing is the wonderful thing about her is she loves me for whoever who i am okay mm-hmm. which is a blessing but can also be a bit of a a curse in itself yeah I get because that. when you're when i was the person i was it created issues and problems because i didn't have the accountability Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. until yeah. it was too late you know yeah. um so that was great lost weight and then i probably at some point in and during all this time i had a lot lots of stress going on but because i had the focus of losing weight and everything else and i'd obviously left my wife and started divorce proceedings and that sort of thing that was quite stressful but it never really impacted it so at some point probably in 2012 i'd probably think about october november time I stopped going to the gym. So I thought, hey, I've done it now. I've cracked it. I've only got down to about 17 and a half, 18 stone, I think it was. Yeah. 17, no, 18 stone. I was right, quite happy. Got in the jeans I wanted to. I was, everything was perfect. Really happy. Um, and then I started that journey again of being comfortable. Mm-hmm. And I was comfortable. When I'm happy, I overeat. When I'm sad, I overeat. In fact, mm-hmm. my perfect state would be neutral because i would never overeat if i could just yeah, be neutral yeah. all my life life would be perfect yeah. if i could be a gray boring person life would be great and i mm. I, I would be great um mm. so weight gradually crept up in 2013 uh my divorce came through in the august and we set to get married in the november and my weight had creeped up so i got big again i got huge um not to the size i was before but i'd got up to about 24 stone but yeah. because i've been 33 stone even at 24 i was like it didn't matter yeah i put a bit of weight on a bit more but i still looked good and i was fantastic yeah in myself and what i was previously and Carmen was like oh you put a bit of weight on so i thought okay i know what works um i got a personal trainer again went on an eight-week program of just killing myself because i had any- in sandbach yeah uh, no, this is back in London. So I was living in London at the time. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. I was living in London. So I got a, my previous trainer had quit doing training. He was doing something else. So I, he recommended me another friend, Jamie, who who was brilliant, strength and conditioning expert. So he's perfect for me. And we just did loads of weights and stuff. And it was great. Yeah. Lost weight, got down to the wedding. And I probably didn't go back to, you know, got to about 18 and a half stone, but I fit in the suit. Everything was perfect. I, look, I felt great, looked good. Yeah. Um, not as good as I look now, but it was a disappointment because I'd love to get the photos done again. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe a 10 year anniversary. Um, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So, but that, that happened and that was amazing. So, 
got married, had a great day, um, and then moved back from London to North Wales, and the weight started creeping up again. Gradually yeah. and gradually, they started creeping up. Um, and then before I knew it, um, you know, I'd, I'd then do the cycle and calm and go, you're a bit chunky there, you take your shirt a bit tight, so I'd lose a bit of weight. But I was never addressing these things. Then yeah. in 2016, I gave up my consulting job uh, mm -hmm. and got head hunted to join uh, National Express in their corporate role. Um, so I went, okay, great. Um, Carmen wanted it. It gave me security, gave me a salary. We could get a mortgage, all the things we wanted. Um, so I took that role and it was a bit of a shock for me because I was like, okay, I've been my own boss and now I'm not my own boss and I had bosses and uh, it was quite stressful. And throughout that year of 2016, towards the latter part, I was under immense stress. I was eating more and I was putting more weight on. And then in 2017, um, I was doing a project and it was really stressful. And I had two people who were just two senior execs who were just ridiculously demanding in different directions, weren't listening to me, throwing me under buses, literally, um, with their demands or, you know, set me up to fail. And it was just, I just couldn't control it. And it pushed me to the edge. Uh, and I always started, I mean, it's the last time we spoke. So I went to Shrewsbury for the day, went to Starbucks. Yep. Um, and I, I've lost three, I lost three or four hours. I can't tell you uh, what happened. And that gave me the warning sign that I need to do something. And this was a different one mentally rather than that physically standing yeah, on the scale it's a, it's a mental mental times and you've got issues and you need to get that help and at that point you know i just didn't know what to do um and i resorted again to emotional eating and binge eating to a, an extent again mm. and i think what's important to cover in this is at that point, and I'll come to it a bit because I'll go back in time in a bit because it's important about my recovery. I was under that pressure, and but I didn't have anyone to. I spoke to HR, and they were great. They got me support. I got counselling and all that, and and I did have a breakdown. I they gave me a couple. Of, I had a couple of weeks off, mm -hmm. um, but I resorted to eating again. Mm -hmm. I was eating and I, and eating, and then in the April we won an award for one of the projects I worked on, and there was a photograph and. I saw that photo and basically I saw in that photograph, the guy you saw in that first picture you showed. Yes. At the airport. And yeah. I, that hit me harder than the doctor's surgery. I was in Manchester at the time, got the last train back to Sandbach, got home and I just broke down. In, to yeah, the we're talking just to, to remind people that kind yeah. of, anyway, so sorry. Yeah. So, and I broke down because, you know, I was like, oh my God, look what's happened to me. Look, you know, where, what's gone on? Why am I, I thought I'd got rid of that guy. I thought mm -hmm. I'd banished him. Yeah. And, and I thought, I can't do this anymore. I'm just useless. I'm, I, I can't, why can't I control this? Why, why, why me? And, you know, it did drive me, you know, I did have the, you know, I did think about, well, I'm going to be dead again. Hmm. I'm killing myself again. Yeah. And it drove me to the edge. And, and, and I did think that, well, if I'm going to do this to myself, I might as well just get rid of myself now anyway, because I'm just a burden to everybody because I, I can't even look after myself. And was that the feeling of it because it had been repeated and repeated and repeated? Like I've yeah. done up, I've gone down, I've gone up, I've gone down. And, yeah. and then I saw, but, but what was worse in the picture, the, the photograph, the, the person's eye, that guy who was looking back at me, was that guy who had those feelings, that torture, that that unhappiness that I thought, and at the present time, right, I had everything. I had a six-figure job. I had a Range Rover parked on my drive. I had a beautiful detached house in Sandwich. On the outside, I had everything. Yeah, yeah. I had it all, right? But there is this person who is just unhappy. And I had a beautiful wife. You know, I had yeah. everything. 
your dogs. Oh, the dog, <laughs> well, yeah, we had one at the time, no, two at the time, and it's like yeah. great. And I thought, there's yeah. everything I've got, I had everything, but I didn't. Yeah. And um, at that point, then I, I realized that I had a problem, but I didn't know what to do. And I went, I had a good friend, Ruth, um, she was talking to me and she says, Well, you great that you know you've got a problem she says i think we need you need some help with your eating mm -hmm. um and and you know and i said before i went to ovaries anonymous um for and i'd never heard them before and nobody does because as i found out to my peril the 11th step in uh the 12 steps is um you're anonymous and you keep your anonymity and if you talk about it you get kicked out yeah yeah, yeah first of all fight club don't talk about fight club yeah it's, so the 11th it's, rule, it's the 11th rule in the yeah, ovaries anonymous is that you're you and it's to protect people's anonymity. So, so I, if you remember, till, right? till I till you told me that you went, I didn't yeah. know it existed yeah. at all. Yeah. I'd never heard of alcoholics, yeah. Office, yeah, I'd heard of yeah. drug yeah. things, yeah, I'd heard of never that, never that. And okay, if you publicize that's great, but you can no longer play an active role. I can still go to meetings, I can still get support, but mm. if I wanted to continue my role as a sponsor, I, ha I would have had to. Use my first name and have my face covered if I was talking about ovaries and all this, which is fine, you know. I, yeah. you know, um, yeah. and I'm ever grateful to them, and I'll do everything I can. I will talk about them now because I want people to go and you know, you know, seek help if they if they're in that situation. So yeah. I did that. Um, I then resorted to the old tipsy type of right, get personal training because I've done that before that worked, so I've got personal training, great. Um, but I picked one this time who understood nutrition and understood a journey and we wanted to set goals um hmm. so we did and when you're doing the 12-step process obviously firstly you have you know one thing you have to do is accept that that um there's a high being there's somebody who's in control of your life and it's, yeah. somebody says god but you can choose because they use all denominations but you have to accept that you are not in control of these things because if you're in yeah. control of them you wouldn't overeat would you no, <laughs> very true. Very true. Um, yeah. And then uh, working through the steps, you have to make a recompense for what you do. Now, all I did when I was doing this was all hidden from everyone because I was ashamed. Mm -hmm. I was ashamed of it. And, you know, I didn't tell my wife for six months. I went, didn't tell my wife. And uh, she was getting worried. She thought I was having an affair, to be honest, because I'd be disappearing. Oh, I'd be yeah. surreptitiously texting somebody. But I was texting yeah. my sponsor. Yeah, yeah. Um, Wait, and then yeah. when I came to the, I had to open up and tell her, um, I then had to realize the damage and pain I'd done. And the thing about being an emotional eater or a binge eater is, especially in this addiction that I had is it create, makes you a liar and it makes you a cheat. Hmm. And I posted it on Facebook, a video about it. And my wife commented, bless her. Um, and the famous story I always tell is when we were on holiday in Wiltshire, we went to go and get, uh, some, uh, feed some ducks. So I went to Morrison's to get some bread, even though shouldn't feed ducks bread. It's bad for them. Just so everyone knows. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Don't feed ducks bread. I know now. Yeah. Um, so I was there and I walked in there's some cinnamon swirls. Now cinnamon swirls, phew, they're, the, they're, the, they're the devil to me, along right. with Domino's pizza and hobnobs. Um, <laughs> and I walked, I thought, right. So I saw them. My first thought was not, oh, I'll get some. We can all have some together. My first thought was, if I buy them, can I eat them all before I get back to Carmen and Ebony? Yeah, man, that's mad, isn't it? That is mad. Yeah, like, that was like, my thought. Yeah. yeah. Not, not. oh, it would be great. We could all eat, eat them and it'd be nice. No. Can I eat them and get eat them before I get back to them? And yeah. I realise now the amount of pressure I put on my relationship with Carmen by being a liar and a cheat. Because guess what? If you're lying and cheating about food... You can lie and cheat about other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And that we've worked a lot of work on this because, you know, and I've had to do a lot of apologizing. And I had to do a lot of apologizing to lots of people in this process because mm. I did, I, I ruined my best friendship mm. over my emotional eating. What, what, what feeling do you think you were? So, in, in moments like that, where you'd like, it obviously wasn't a hunger. Yeah. You were trying to. What feeling do you think you were trying to create or replace, or when when you would have that that binge? Not not talking about weeks and weeks, just that moment of like, 
eat those four cinnamon swirls. Yeah. What, what, um, think, what, what? It was just that was that food. I needed to have it. I needed to have it. Um, and I wasn't hungry. It wasn't anything else. I just need to have it. I just they're there. They they need to be eaten. They're mine. They taste nice, yeah. Bang. There we go. It, yeah. Wasn't even taste nice, mate. The amount, I, the way, the way I shoved them down my throat, I wouldn't even tasted them. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, and it wasn't that I needed the calories. It was just eat them, get it done. Mm. Um, so for me, yeah, that was the that you know, and and as I said I've done a lot of working on that, uh, and that's probably been one of the hardest things. So, so then I started realizing that actually for my recovery, I need to start working from the neck up because that's where this is where I'm going to solve the problem because this is where the problem lies. Mm. Yeah. Um, and basically since then, um, I did my, I know, uh, you know, um, I did a year of these anonymous. Um, and then I, I went alone. I've worked obviously since I met Paul Mort, I was working with Paul Mort at the same time. And it's interesting. I started working with Paul at my breakdown. So mm. before I dealt with emotional eating, mm. and I never really used Paul's techniques for emotional eating until um, I had dealt with my breakdown because I didn't realize, and I'd been really clever. I didn't think it was clever. I decompartmentalized it and said, right, okay, Paul's going to help with my mindset. Overeat is going to deal with my emotional eating, and I never married the two together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's probably in a way best that i did that way because i could have been really really conflicted but i put them in separate buckets yeah um yeah. and that worked that worked really well for me and then i'm going to share another picture in a second now whilst you yeah. talk about it. i've had some questions um that, that i think you've answered a couple of them. we had we've got amy one of our coaches um at, our, at hope hit zone hove down down yeah. in Brighton. and um she said two questions what was your biggest struggle which i think we've kind of we've kind of tackled but if you're talking from a habit point of view, yeah. from a habit, from daily habits, daily actions, what do you think is the biggest habit you've changed? Um, so I'll lump them together, but they're they're in it. so basically I now have a morning routine. Okay. So that is my biggest habit is a morning routine because I set myself up for a day that I can't it can go wrong, right? Mm -hmm. Because human nature can screw up, but I set myself up so I win the morning and I win the day. Yeah. And in it, you know, I journal like you do, know, you know. So journaling was a big part of my um recovery. Yeah. Um and just while so people are watching yeah. some of the people who, who know me will know my thoughts on journaling and what I think yeah. about journaling. But journaling, if, if you had to describe journaling without using the word journaling, because I think a lot yeah. of people put a lot of people off. They're like, oh yeah. what? So, I really so I've done both sets of journaling, um, Stuart. So in the beginning, my journaling was therapy, just writing, writing yeah. feelings, right? Um, I bled that thing dry, mm -hmm. okay? And I can't I can't write like that anymore because yeah. it, it it killed me doing it. Yeah. Um, so I now journal the new approach by asking myself a series of questions. Yeah. I ask myself the same questions every morning, every night, and that's how I journal. Yeah. Because that meets my need to get the results I need to get. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm talking about a good series of questions. Share this picture of you now, yeah. holding, doing a farmer's walk with the weight you'd lost. Yeah, and I love the picture. I think it's amazing. I'm just gonna whilst we're talking, I'll, I'll yeah. leave that one. Up. So that that morning routine sets you up for the day. Yeah, and, and in the process, so so one of the one of the things that the habits I now have is I have affirmations. Okay, and I have them, and when I'm getting, and trust me, I'm in recovery. I'm not. I'm not better. I never will be better. And every day is a struggle and a fight. And every morning I have to wake up and go. I am not going to do this again to myself. Yep. yep. And and I have to do that every day. But by using sort of affirmations, then actually that then will sort of help me, you know, to a certain extent um, do that. I'm just let me just get it up to, so I can. Uh, help when we talk, but yes, so uh, and this is really important, guys. Whilst, whilst Chris is looking at this, yeah. self talk is like it's the only thing that we can totally rely on, 
Yeah. It's the only thing that we can kind of control is our self-talk. Um, and, you know, talking about affirmations, you know, we have, yeah. we use the same journal, Chris and I, um, yeah. the same style journal, we don't write in the same one. Um, yeah. An I am statement. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, what, yeah. Um, and, I, and, and mine is every day, is, and it hasn't changed now, is I am a world-class transformation coach who will help the lives of thousands of people. Yeah. And that's what yeah. I say. So and if you compare that to your talk, yeah, at probably any point from three years ago backwards yeah. to what your self-talk was then, yeah, and when you had that breakdown, yeah, like look at the difference just yeah. and the power in, in what you tell yourself and what you yeah. say to yourself. And I think now, I think... Yeah, so I have affirmations. I use them, and I use these quite frequently to myself, because you know I have to say I you know, in the morning I say I have conquered emotional eating because I have to say I have because I have conquered it, but mm. I also know that I am one day away from relapse. Mm. So I've conquered mm. it. I know I've conquered it, but I'm also yeah. realistic that I'm away from it. You know. I also tell myself I've let go of food as my coping mechanism because if I keep using the affirmations, I keep reinforcing it in my mind. Yeah, yeah. And, in specific, and I use them if I ever feel like a relapse. I also have a whole load of I am affirmations as well that I use for my personal development. Yeah. But by yeah. doing that statement, I'm putting a realism on it that's important and, mm. and that it means something to me. And you're not shying away from where you were either you're not you're not pretending it never happened you're and and it actually brings me on to something that um i think is again really really interesting really important is um we talked really frankly and openly about shame and about Mm. the embarrassment and the shame you felt yeah how does that drive you on now feel it like that embarrassment shame because that's often a bigger trigger than or or a bigger driver for us not trigger bigger driver for us than than the praise or or what i'm doing well now yeah. You said, I never want to go back to being that guy. Is that still something that daily goes through your mind? That yeah. driven by shame? As such? Yeah, every day, every day. And and I will say something openly now to you. One of my biggest regrets I have is that I didn't do something younger to help my children now because they are suffering what I suffered because oh. of how the mistakes I did. They're all so. My youngest daughter is twenty-one. Okay, cool. So they're so all, all, in their 20s, all my children in their twenties. Yeah, right? yeah. And and I and it's probably for me the biggest sadness I have is that I, if I hadn't have done what I did then, and I'd been that role model for them, and I had done all those things, then actually things would be better for them. And are you, but are you now proud to flip that on his head? Are you now proud of? of the role model you're becoming and yeah, you're absolutely becoming- yeah i am i am so proud of of myself and and this is why this is important in my journey so when i left my corporate role i was going to be an executive coach mm, yep yeah. i remember I, the very call we were yeah. on um i'm on a paul's calls yeah. where you're talking about yeah being an executive coach I'd, I'd already started getting clients and all of this um and I'd, i had a job in germany and i was going to coach some guys in germany and it's going to be great and i thought brilliant um or i was going to do some consulting like i did before and then basically with alex alex said wow you know we started chatting after that horrible day on the beach when we got beasted um I was in- and, he, and he said um wow you lost a lot of weight I went, yeah yeah i have um he said well that's amazing so yeah, we really like you guys talk it, tell your story. I said, yeah, that's no problem. And I sent him the slides over, and he went, there's a typo. I went, what do you mean? He says, well, you put 100 kilograms there. I went, oh, yeah, it should be 110. But I say 100 because it's easier, because that's probably where I am now. Yeah. And he went, no, no, I thought the typo was 100 kilograms. He went, that's insane. Yeah. You must see jaws dropping when, when, when you say to people that you've lost 100 kilos. Yeah. Well, Facebook people- don't believe me. That's what's annoying me at the moment. Yeah, you get, you'll get all your adverts. Um, get, they won't allow them because they're going, they don't believe you. It's not allowed, but, you know, it's fake. But they won't let you show the pictures in the same, no. in the same advert to prove it. No. Thanks, Facebook. Um, uh, but, yeah, and I think, yeah, so from that, I had an epiphany, and it's interesting, I listened to Ollie Ollerton's book this morning, and it was a split second. So, basically, I delivered that presentation to Alex group, came off it, and I went, I now know what I need to do. Don't know how I'm going to do it, yeah. but I need to change people's lives because I've been there, I've done it, I know the pain, and I yeah. kept seeing all of this bloody rubbish 
on Facebook, Instagram, on TV about, you know, oh, there's, everyone's looking for that quick fix. And, yeah, weight loss can happen, and you've got motivation, you can do it. But actually, if you don't deal with the emotional eating, I speak to lots of people who go, yeah, I'm great during the week. On oh, Friday, I just ruin yeah. it. Well, people well, can go you've got a problem then. Anywhere. Like, there's yeah. coaches, there's, there's yeah. things. But if you're dealing with that deeper problem, yeah. You're going to have the same problem as, as you had, which was that yo-yo, that, that, yeah. that up and down, that yo-yo. And um, another question that came in, yeah. which, which is an interesting one. I've never never thought this one before. Um, going against the grain with this one, mm -hmm. what was the easiest change to make during this journey? What was the thing that just yeah, was Getting easy? Getting my wife. Okay. That's a massive change. Yeah, but it was the easiest one I made. Such a huge change. It was the easiest one I made. Because yeah. I again had my second, I had my that was probably my first epiphany was mm. if I stay, I'm going to die. Yeah, and how much more stark can that conversation be in your own head, man? That is if I stay, I, I came back from London one time and I went, I went, I need to leave because if I don't, I will die. Because yeah. she's tried to start undermining my progress, mm. and that made me realize, well, actually, you know, um, I'm gonna die. And regardless of feelings, yeah. Regardless of feelings, that is not an e that's 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 a big change to make anyway. You know, regardless of even if it's the most certain thing in the world, yeah, it's a big it's a big change to make. Yeah. Um, and then so going back to Kyle's question, what what is your current like or or, or genuine when when you're this tipsy yeah. now, triathlete, yeah. world class coach, transformation coach? What's your yeah. go to meal? What's your like your 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 healthy your favorite your your, your meal? Um, we have a brand new one, which is great for veg. So basically, um, go to Aldi, 7% fat turkey mince, two packets of their vegetables that you microwave um, in the fresh veg aisle, um, yeah. a bit of chicken gravy from Bisto, the light one, um, three packets of uh, the carrot and sweet mash. You basically yeah. cook the mince, put it into a, uh, pat, put it into a, a baking tray, yeah. Cook the veg, make uh, crush the vegetables up, put that in there, cover with the mash, put it in the oven, done. And who you, says, it, you could have corn mince, mate. Yeah, and who says eating healthy is difficult? That that's what 10 minutes work, 15 minutes work. Yeah, basically, it? you are microwaving the vegetables while you're frying the mince. Yeah. All right. You then put that into the pan and then you put it in the oven and then say, yeah, half an hour, 40 minutes later, it's ready. Love that. Love that. And it's 300. Uh, so if you, if you have a big enough, you can make eight portions out of it. It's 383 calories per portion. There we go. Boom. And filling as anything, I bet, because of the veg. Oh, it's amazing. Um, and just just another one. And this, it, although this is kind of, this this was sent in in a jokey kind of way, it's actually yeah. probably a, a serious point you made out about it. Which is someone just commented on my Instagram post saying, "Can he sew my mouth shut?" So that leads me on to a question. <laughs> Are we going to have the debate about surgery and gastric, gastric bands then, shall we? Well, we could. We could have that. But I would say when yeah. you're in that place of like eating yeah. and literally, and I bet you people watching this will relate to this, where you're just like, I'm not hungry. I'm just yeah. eating. I'm just eating. I'm just eating. Um, was there, so you've mentioned the trigger foods you have around Domino's, Hobnobs, yeah. <clears throat> and Swirls. The affirmations that you say to yourself, if you have the feeling of some, even if it's a very minute feeling of, of a relapse now where you think, oh, I could just have a Domino's or yeah. I, I just want to eat. I'm, I'm not, I've had, you know, whether it's from a bad day or a bad week or something, is there any yeah. tactics you have to go stop that right there before it becomes a, a relapse? Oh, so you're trying to ring me now. <laughs> <laughs> how dare they how dare they how very dare they yeah sorry i missed it so i turned the phone off it's ringing um yeah so if, if you're having that moment where that like you feel i could relapse here i, I could just yeah. go and get these hobnobs or uh, you know let's say they're not in the house so we yeah. know that i think don't keep this stuff in the house but you go to ring like dominoes or you go is there something you have as like a, almost a trigger to stop that yeah um yes um I think in terms of that, I have I use a technical pattern disrupt. So if I am um, well, first thing first is I will not have hobnobs in the house. Sorry, yep. we'll have gluten free hobnobs in the house because I can eat I can eat one of them and I'm happy. Okay. Is that because they don't taste very nice or is yeah. that because Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
um, um, but Domino's, so this is interesting. Um, I don't know if I can do it. So I do test myself all of the time. Okay. Um, and it hasn't come there, so I've got on this one. Yeah, I still get, I'm still on Domino's mailing list. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, Let's today. See. At least weekly. There you go. Man. What do you so I do it? So, there, you know, I get that trigger and I go, I'm having Domino's. Yeah, so you, okay. You, you, my trigger. Prove my strength, kind of thing. Prove yeah, my. Just, and I could easily, yeah, because at the end of the day, you know, to order Domino's, I've got to go on the app. I've got to phone them up. I've got to jump in the car. Well, that's enough to stop me doing that. Um, no, yeah. So that's why yeah. you know, Ben's just put there, lock the treats in the garage, or don't have the hobnobs. That yeah, I, yeah, and I think. Or oh, the other thing I try and do because I don't. I think locking things away is a bit drastic. A bit like sewing your mouth shut. Um, yeah. What we have in our house is treats. I have my own treats, and I can manage them. Mm -hmm. So I have protein bars. Yeah. The other bars of chocolate we have, um, I make sure they buy ones I don't like. I don't like crunchies. I okay. don't like you know certain you know like lion bars. Don't like picnics. Oh, so guess what? Just, two of my favourite there, but never. Yeah, but they have them. They have them in the house, and that's fine because I don't eat them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, sewing your mouth shut is a bit. You know, I think you can mentally do that. Mm, mm, yeah, yeah. It just takes a lot of coaching, a lot of training, a lot of questions asking, and dealing with emotional eating. And another question I've been asking everyone on these these yeah. uh, chats: We've just recently finished the World Cup of desserts in our um, in our Facebook members Facebook group. Yeah, one dessert. You can only have one dessert again in your life. What would you What would you choose? What's your favourite? It'd have to be a cinnamon swirl. Oh wow! Okay, even though you know that would cause you, would that be a trigger yeah, now? It, if it's the last one in the world I can have, I'm having a cinnamon swirl. Okay, ah, that's a, you've 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 done well with that. You've done well clever with that because you can't overeat them. If there's yeah, only one, it's the last one, you just said it's the last one you can have. So well, there you go. Yeah. Swirl. But genuinely, now a cinnamon swirls there with Domino's and, and hobnobs. Uh, in, no, they're not too bad actually. I I have a, I I can eat them. Okay, and then I can eat them. to kind of wrap up, what yeah. what's next for Tibsy? So. What, 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 uh, up yeah. over a bit like business wise, fitness wise, what's coming up? What, what, what have we got? So planned? the next step. So this year I've got two triathlons booked. Um, so I'm doing the Cheshire Triathlon in May and then the Bala Lake Olympic Triathlon in September, and that's building up for my half iron man in Windermere next May. That's amazing. So that's my plan. Um and, and hopefully if you know start playing rugby again. Do you but, enjoy that? Um, oh, you, um it, it, that moment you said about Alex on the beach, we were in the same team. Yeah. Um, for that horrible crawling through the yeah. sand, lying in the sea, burpees, yeah. prep ups, all sorts. And you, your Achilles w wasn't good. Is that? I better? tore my Achilles that day. Yeah. Is that is that better now? Are you? Yeah. Uh, thankfully, lo thankfully, lockdown got that fixed. <laughs> <laughs> good. Um, I'm going to share another little picture actually yeah. uh, while we're talking of um, yeah, have you uh, recently? I think this one is. Um, if I can find it. Showing that training. There we go. I think that's pretty recent, isn't it? Uh, that was yeah. That was minus two degrees. Wow, getting it done though. And what, and what would you say then? I'll finish on this. What would you say is with these lockdowns, yeah. from a physical kind of training point of view, whatever people's goals are, whether it's weight yeah. loss, muscle building, whatever. Yeah. How do you, you know, uh, you know, you're starting up a, a business. You're you're in the early early stages of a business, which which uh, I'm really excited to see what's what, what what's going on um you know and and where this journey is going to take you I'm, I'm excited for that but so yeah times of stress you know uncertainty etc yeah i still see on your on your social media you're training regularly you're yeah. getting it done what what was what's the key to that how do you keep that as a constant um it's part of my i i probably replaced i placed walking and and uh food with walking and exercise yeah you get well, some we... steps don't you? you and ben yeah. <laughs> Ben in our in our group, yeah. Um, you guys put us to shame with some of the steps. Yeah, yeah. And, and he's right. Yum yums are incredible. Yeah, Jody would. Yeah, yeah. Jody, that's up there with her favourite. So, yeah. so when, when you go out for a walk, yeah. Uh, what do you do? Do you just listen to audio books? Do you do what? Like how? Yeah, you because know, you go out. So and do... I've got I've got two labradoodles who love walking. Yeah. So uh, that's one walk down. You can out of the way. Uh, and then I have yeah. I just listen to audio books. I use it. I used to sit at home studying, and I thought that's a bit stupid. So I basically go out and listen to an audio book. Yeah. Do, 
Uh, and then the training, yeah, training is just, you know, um, I like the fact now I, I like at 49 in a couple of weeks' time I'll be. I like pushing myself. Yeah. And, you and feel- there's nothing better at the beginning of the year when we thought we were going to play rugby again and I spent the summer training and the other lads have been on the lash because they've been let down from lockdown. So they all went on lash. I went to train and I was doing pre-season six weeks before they started pre-season. Um, yeah. And at 48, I'm beating lads who are 23, 24. No, okay. After they started getting into it, they could beat me. But first day of pre-season training, I was smashing them. So, yeah. And I guess you must feel a bit of a like blessing that you can train, considering yeah. where you are. That like I've, you've got you've got. Oh this. yeah. What one of them? Um, uh, a friend and, and hit owner of ours here, Sandra's put them up there. And um, thank you. And um, she's doing her first small triathlon this year. Do, do you have any tips for? She's an, she's called herself an old newbie. Any any tips for? Starting this triathlon journey, yeah, enjoy it and practice the transition from cycling to walking. Go for a bike ride and get used to getting off your bike and don't fall off like I did. Okay, okay, because you're cycling. If you're doing even a short one, you're doing a 21k bike and you push yourself because you always push yourself at the end because you go in and you step off that bike and you try to run, you'll step off and fall over. Yeah, I remember doing that. I did a 65 mile bike ride for charity 2019, yeah. I think it was. And yeah, like <laughs> walking for a couple of days afterwards, let alone straight. Yeah. straight and that, up. that was the worst thing that I found. Uh, and the yeah. other thing I'll do if you're doing a short one, um, just st- stick with your trainers on the bike. There you go. So so, stick with because you. cycling shoes, you don't get any benefit on a short but run. And okay. enjoy it. Yeah. That's a good one. I'm just going to share some of the comments that have come in whilst we're saying goodbye, just to show you some of the stuff that's coming. So Vicky, yeah. um, kind of very, a couple of people here have said they really relate, um, yeah. really relate to um, uh, Sarah here. Um, yeah, you have to want to do it because you want to. Um, well done to you. Um, yeah. A few of the guys, Sam and Ross and Ben, have said. Uh, done, Jody says crunchies are the best. Um, Sam, who's I a, just don't like him. I just, I just don't. You know, I wish I did like him. Because there's so many yeah. in our house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. Um, Sam said, "Yeah, one of our coaches and, and, yeah. and member of the team here at Hit Zone has said, amazing, have a fantastic year." Um, Jackie, um, yeah, forty nine. Wow, you look great. There you go. Thank so you very much. That's made my yeah. day. There you go. Um, but like, yeah, thank you very much. No, thank Chris. you. And apologies for running you over, running late. So you got. No, that. That's cool. Um, I, like I could listen to your journey all day, man. It's it's, it's fascinating, guys. I'm going to stick at the bottom here. Just um couple of things if you want to um, follow um chris and, and his business partner dom's uh, business what they're doing um the the facebook and instagram link is at the bottom there if you want to see chris chris as well on on instagram that's his handle um the dogs. yeah if, it's, if you want um you know if, if generally guys you know I, I know here at hit zone we support you with your nutrition your mindset your, your exercise things but if you've got a particular issue around emotionally in relationship with food and things Chris is a better man than me to, to, to help and with that. I am doing a free masterclass next Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. on my journey and my transformation and my tips and tricks. Awesome. So, guys, if you want the detail, what I'll do, Chris, is a job for you. Um, if you head to the Hit Zone Shropshire link and the link on my page uh, this afternoon, just pop the um, just pop the link to that masterclass, if you can, I in the comments. Um, and then Jane and, and, and Jackie have said thank you. Uh, a very good. And, and guys, yeah, any, any, any help you need around health, well-being, exercise mindset give me a shout drop me a message you know chris will be happy to help you as well um i really make sure you get dom our business my business partner because his story is equally as inspiring but in a completely different view so um he's, he's on my list of people to get yeah. on i'm looking forward to uh it's, it's a different accent, direction but equally as inspiring his accent's a little bit more difficult to understand than, than yours yeah. or mine. I know. um, um okay, and brilliant yeah I, I appreciate that chris and guy um i know you know you went you went with Darren, you went with uh jamie alderton but obviously now you're in the big time Oh, absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. Here. Um, I went on the BBC before, Darren, so, um, yeah, <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Anyway, um, yeah, appreciate that, Chris. Appreciate you guys uh, watching this. Cheers. Any questions, pop them in the comments. We'll see them. Um, have a lovely weekend, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, everyone.